Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm in Ohio. I've been wanting to do a video now for some time on our chicken tractor and chicken tractor design. Uh, we've been running Cornish cross meat birds now uh, on pasture for about four years. Uh, and we've learned a few things during that time and uh, regarding our chicken tractor, what works, what doesn't, what we prefer uh, and what's necessary and what's not. So. Uh, let's dig in. Our two biggest influences uh, in regards to the chicken tractor have been uh, number one, Joel Salatin, and number two, John Siskovich. Um, we've pulled from from both of these uh, these designs, uh, right? That these guys came up with. Um, Wanted to make the point, though, that any any kind of criticism or critique is certainly nothing uh, personal in regards to them. These guys are obviously have done amazing things uh, and are continuing to do amazing things in regards to regenerative agriculture. And so, you know, just wanted to say uh, that uh, each each farm has to come up with um, what works for them and uh, the the best design for uh, their specific location. So let's get into this. So this is our chicken tractor uh, set up here. It's, uh, gosh, probably three, four years old now. So it's it's kind of taken a beating here uh, the last few years, but it's still still holding together. It's done pretty well for us. We, we've got everybody pulled up right now uh, to our barn for processing tomorrow. Uh, so that's what they're doing what they're doing up this close to the barn, but normally we're running them out uh, in our different paddocks. This particular tractor here, we kind of pulled from several different designs and kind of kind of made our own. So I liked uh, I liked John Siskovich's design. I ordered his book, um, but for me, his tractor was just way too small. Uh, I can't remember how many how many birds he was running in his, but um, it, it was it was just too small. So I. We also started with uh, Joel Salatin's uh, smaller tractors, right? The ones that you can't even get in. And that that first processing, when we did that first processing, it was processing. It was it was absolutely horrendous uh, to to get in there on your hands and knees, crawling around trying to get the birds out for processing. So I, I knew I wanted something I could walk in, um, and I liked Siskovich's design. I just wanted it bigger. So we did this, this is a 10 foot by 12 foot area. Like I say, 100, 100 birds in here. Um, we are at nine weeks, I believe tomorrow. You can see they're, they're pretty good size, but basically, you know, what we've got in here, we did the, the conduit uh, every so often for supports, okay? And the whole, all of the wood is true one by six poplar fence boards okay we when we started out we we built our first tractor out of two by fours and it was so heavy it was like a tank so we found these these are treated one by six true one by six fence boards and we ripped them down the middle to make a true uh well here it is right here on this roost bar this is this is the size that we used for everything it's a true one by three because we we ripped the true one by six so that's what we used for for all the construction i'll give you a look at the sides here just kind of how we just brace the corners together screwed everything deck screws got the netting on the top uh wire mesh with the tarp over top i'll talk about the tarp more in here just in just a second um we've got this coming up this conduit and then it's bent at the top and just zip tied to a straight piece so the important thing is that that the whole thing is is wired in we've got a, a skinnier wire mesh here uh all the way around the bottom and this uh this has worked this has kept our our predators out um and kept the birds uh kept the birds safe uh, until processing day Pretty hot today. We got several of them panting. You can see, but uh, plenty of plenty of water, plenty of shade to stay cool. Okay, let's talk tarps. Uh, the tarp is an integral part of this 
chicken tractor of the design. Super important, right? Uh, you need something that's going to hold up. Um, like I say, I did buy John Siskovich's book, did read through it. I actually purchased his recommended tarp on Amazon. Uh, it was, no disrespect, it was complete junk. Lasted me maybe two months uh, out here on the farm in the weather. So I went to uh, tarpsupply.com, I do believe. I know this is an 18 ounce, uh, 10 foot by 15 foot, super heavy duty, vinyl tarp and it has held up for three years um so you know we've got the the grommets here on the edges uh is just zip tied uh to our wire yeah, you can see here and uh you know uh, every once in a while like every year i'll have a few of those zip ties to replace um but by and large uh yeah you know we we paid more uh for this tarp but i was i was done with uh, with the cheap stuff uh, ripping, and you know, then you've got you've got water coming in. Um, this this white tarp uh, has held up great. Um, it's done the job. So. so we throw our we throw our feed right on the ground. We used, we used to use troughs, didn't we? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. We discovered uh, putting it right on the ground. Everybody can get to it. Go around to the corners first. Spreads the birds out. All right, we got a hose out here. It runs from our, our elevated tanks there in the barn. And on this, uh, this chicken tractor here, we uh, We've upgraded to a seven gallon bucket on the back. Not really a standard size bucket, but the five gallon we discovered in the real hot days just runs out. Uh, runs out too soon, doesn't quite get us to the next morning. So if we wanna just service uh, the tractor one time a day, uh, this seven gallon bucket's been working great. So that runs inside to a Plawson Bell water. And that just hangs from a chain uh, we can adjust it there. It just runs around the top, piece of conduit, and uh, you know, hangs in there, shuts on and off as we need it. Go ahead, you can fill her up there, buddy. We we also run um, a couple of these two and a half gallon waters as well. Uh, fill those, and we keep those in there. And so, uh, what two and a half, two and a half? That's five and seven, about 12 gallons of water a day uh, for 100 birds. Now, usually when we come out, there's still quite a bit left in the, the seven gallon bucket if it hasn't been hot. Um, but I notice, especially right after feeding, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna hit the water heavy. And so one of these will usually run out first. They'll, uh, they'll hit that right after feeding. And so if I'm out here later in the day, I will, uh, you know, I'll fill that, the one that, uh, the water that runs out. But, uh, let's see, uh, everybody's just been fed, so it's, uh, quite the buffet. So I wanted to, wanted to talk a little bit about this, uh, this back piece here. So the, you know, the thing about the chicken tractor is you you want this to come down all the sides to be down right on the ground at night so nothing can get under there right but but you also need to move it during the day and so we came up with this design you've got uh, a top there that moves okay so that just swivels on a bolt and you can see uh, if I press down here with my foot just press down on this piece and then this comes back, let up, and it locks into place. So when we're like this, that the, the wheels, let's see here, the wheels actually come up, and this is pressed down on, see? It 
it raises the whole thing up. And I wanted something simple, something that I could do by myself. You know, I, I see people with the, the lawnmower wheel adjustment things on each end. I mean, that's fine, but you're, you're gonna spend time going to each adjustment every day, you know, putting it down, putting it up, putting it down. This was, this is one, one step right in the middle. Pull this back, you're, you're good to go. Now I will say on our wheel setup, you can see that these wheels, look how slanted they are. And I just ran a bolt, uh, a bolt through here. Um, actually, yeah, back here is the, is the problem bolt. You can see that that, that pivots, right? When I'm pushing up and down. And it goes through, you can see it goes through those three boards. But what I would have done differently is I believe I would have put a metal, uh, like a bushing through here. Uh, if I build another one, I'll, I'll do that. Cause this wood has just given way, you know, over, over the years, but it's held up pretty well. Obviously the uh, flat free, flat free tires um, have worked out well. You don't want to be out here, you know, pumping those babies up during the season when you get going. So. But that, that's kind of our, our setup to get this, get this thing off the ground to move. And then of course you just push down like you saw there and that thing goes back into place when you're done. It's just, it's just been really easy, very simple design. Um, so that, that's worked well for us on the back. You know, one other thing that I, I really love uh, about the meat birds is you know, of course we, we raise them for meat, uh, for the family. And it's just, I, I think it's phenomenal chicken. You know, we do, we do sell a bit as well. But um, the thing that I really, really love about them is it's not just about the meat, right? It's about a, it's about a system. Uh, and you can, you can see there over my shoulder uh, where they've been. So it, it's about an integrated uh, system where you're using different kinds of livestock to impact uh, the land and and I just I, every year we pick a different quarter acre paddock out here and we we run we run the meat birds intentionally and 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 just run them hard uh, moving them every single day to a new spot of grass and then by the time processing day hits we we have an you know a pretty good portion of that quarter acre paddock that's been covered in chicken manure and it's just awesome to to see um to see the impact of that it's it's not right away it takes a while but once that grass bounces back uh it's it's just really neat then we, we've actually seen I've, I've done some other videos speaking to the fact that our our animals will intentionally uh try and seek out those paddocks where the the chickens were run the previous year uh, so they'll, they'll try and go. So they can, they, they know that it's superior forage there. Um, but you know, no, no chemical fertilizers, none of that. Just, uh, just that chicken manure being put down. Uh, and again, the advantage of the chicken tractor is it's, it's gonna, it's gonna keep your birds safe from predators, but it's also gonna evenly distribute that manure, uh, every single day. Um, so it, for us, it was about coming up with a, a design, you know, that would work uh, for us, that, that made it, um, you know, somewhat enjoyable and uh, allowed us to, uh, to raise these birds. So we'll process tomorrow, probably end up with about uh, north of 400 pounds of meat uh, in a morning. We have a community processing day. Everybody comes out, lends a hand, and uh, we send chicken home with folks and, and put some in the freezer and uh, improve our land. Uh, at the same time. So, thanks for watching.